Hello, Tui Snyder here. Welcome to my presentation for the Festival of the Unexplained. I'd like to thank Karen Frey for inviting me to speak at this event and Courtney Maroc of Haunt Jaunts for suggesting me to Karen. Before we start, I'm located in North Texas, and I'd really love to know where in the world you are watching from. For my presentation today, I'll be telling you about Deep Creek Cemetery. But first, my name is Tui Snyder. I write books, I give talks, and I do a lot of research. I love digging up weird stuff and sharing it with you. So let's hit the road. Let's take a trip to Deep Creek Cemetery. When it comes to historic Texas burial grounds, Deep Creek has got it all. I'm talking about Wild West history, fascinating and unusual cemetery symbols, and of course, even some paranormal activity. Now, to get our bearings, let me show you where we're going. Deep Creek Cemetery is up in the North Texas area. It's by the town of Boyd, which is a little town, I gotta tell you, it's not that far from where I live, and another little town. Now to get to Deep Creek, it is a little bit off the beaten path. It's a very beautiful drive actually through some tree-lined lanes. It's a really fun place to go. But now at least you can kind of see where in Texas we are gonna be today. The first thing you'll see when we arrive is this stone sign on the left. It says 1860 at the bottom, a little hard to read that, but that is when Deep Creek Cemetery was first established. The next thing you'll see is this imposing gate. I mean, check out those spikes, nasty spikes. <laughs> and as you can see, there's also a padlock. Back in 2010, some bozos vandalized Deep Creek Cemetery by driving a truck through it and knocking over a bunch of monuments. So that's why the gate is locked now, but you can still visit Deep Creek, uh, so don't be daunted. You just have to climb through the fence. Well, on the other side of the gate, you can just climb through it, and then you take a little walk. It's about a quarter of a mile. It really doesn't take long. Historic country cemeteries really make for nice outings, especially now with the pandemic going on, but I, I always love to go to them. So my husband, Larry, and I, we left our masks in the car because it was just the two of us. Kind of nice to be able to go out without a mask on. The first thing we did when we arrived was to find a flat tomb and set up our picnic. Picnicking in cemeteries is a tradition that goes way, way back, all the way to ancient Greece, if not farther. So don't feel bad about it or sheepish. You're perfectly entitled to do so. Just don't be a litter bug. Okay, it's story time. I'm going to tell you about Miss Sally Bowman. We don't always know the story behind the names that we see when we visit historic cemeteries, but the tale of Sally Bowman can give us a taste of what life might have actually been like in the real Wild West. Deep Creek Cemetery is named after the town of Deep Creek, which no longer exists. But it was called Deep Creek because there actually was a deep creek around here. In 1854, some early settlers arrived from East Texas with their family and friends. And because of that deep creek, those newcomers were able to raise cattle, corn, and that always important crop, cotton. Life in Deep Creek was far from easy, but things went pretty well until 1868. That's when 18-year-old Sally Bowman found herself surrounded by Comanches while she was tending her family's prize herd of fine horses. As the teen sped home on her trusty steed, three Native Americans followed her in hot pursuit. Sally actually came quite close to escaping, but as she approached a neighbor's farm, the homeowners watched in horror as two gunshots sent her tumbling to the ground. Both bullets struck her in the back, and they were fired at such close range that they actually set her dress on fire. Sadly, although her dad was a doctor, she succumbed to her wounds and the community of Deep Creek was devastated by this loss, and they chipped in together to buy 
uh, a rather pricey monument. As you can see here, it says it was donated by the residents of Deep Creek. And so if you visit Deep Creek and you're, you're standing at the front, her monument's kind of towards the back. Just walk straight down the middle of it and you're going to see the monument for Miss Sally Bowman. For the earliest European settlers in Texas, a marker like Sally Bowman's was the exception, not the rule. The whole community pitched in to get that marker for her. Most burials for those early settlers would have been much more humble. A simple field stone, for instance, or a wooden marker, a wooden cross, you know, something without any names, dates, or epitaphs engraved on it. Here in Texas, when you're exploring historic cemeteries, it can be really easy to overlook some graves. It's so easy to mistake a rock, you know, just to think it's for a natural feature in the landscape rather than a rock that's marking someone's burial. I've also spoken to groundskeepers and read accounts where cemetery associations have removed all the plain rocks from a burial ground because it was easier to mow. So there can be a lot of forgotten burials in these old cemeteries. It's also easy to overlook pioneer burial cairns. Burial cairns are a type of tomb created by piling rocks over the grave site. And unless they're maintained, these cairns are quickly overtaken by mother nature. Now, most cemeteries back in their heyday, they would have had an annual decoration day. And that was an annual event when everyone would have come together and they would have tended the graves, they would have sang songs and had picnics. But nowadays, these pioneer burial cairns are usually not well tended. Even in cemeteries that you will see where everything else has been mowed and looks pretty nice, but these burial cairns, they tend to be neglected. So it's easy to just walk right by them. Um, they're usually bursting with plants, like I think you can see muscadine grape vines here and other you know, vines and things with stickers. So they aren't the easiest thing to maintain. And eventually they end up just looking like part of the landscape. Um, sometimes these two, sometimes these are dismantled by cemetery associations. Uh, as I mentioned before, like with the field stones being removed, and you know, sometimes this is people are well intentioned, or maybe they're just ignorant, not quite realizing what they're doing. Uh, other times, I have read accounts where some places they just didn't have the same respect for more humble graves as they did for the more fancy monuments that you see. But here's an example of some really well kept pioneer burial cairns. Uh, this is not at Deep Creek. These uh, examples are over in Keller, Texas, at Mount Gilead Cemetery there. And I, I really think these are great because it's rather rare to see pioneer burial cairns uh, in such good shape, at least here in Texas. So this is a, an unusual example. As you can see, they just stack the, these slabs, which they had to, you know, they didn't have machines. They had to use, you know, this was a, not an easy job, an easy thing to make, so it was pretty fascinating to see. So keep in mind that at least in Texas, when you see burial cairns, you are most likely looking at the oldest burials in the cemetery. In 1763, the Reverend Augustus Toplady wrote a hymn called Rock of Ages. The hymn starts out, Rock of Ages cleft to me, but later in the song, there's a line that goes, To thy cross I cling. And in the Victorian era, the sheet music for Rock of Ages often featured a woman who was clinging to a cross. Monument builders were also inspired by this, and the Rock of Ages motif became really popular. And that's why you see so many variations of a woman, clinging to a cross in Victorian era cemetery monuments. Now, the hymn Rock of Ages also inspired the British rockers Def Leppard to pen a tune in the 1980s called Rock of Ages, which later led to a musical and a movie. 
But one thing that's really cool about the Rock of Ages inspired monument in Deep Creek Cemetery is that it actually says Rock of Ages on the headstone. And I hardly ever see that. So don't turn up your nose at visiting smaller, lesser known historic cemeteries because they often contain hidden gems like this. Let's take a minute to talk about the symbolism of arches and keystones. Arches stand for triumph over death, but you can't make an arch without using a keystone. That thing in the center of the arch, that's a keystone. That shape, I guess it looks a little bit like a coffin. A keystone is what gives an arch its strength. It bears the weight and keeps it from collapsing. So I always like to take a look and see what monument builders have put inside their keystones. This one has love inside it. So isn't that a cool symbol? It's like saying, symbolically, that their strength in life comes from love. And here's another keystone I saw in Deep Creek Cemetery. This one has a G in the keystone, and that G stands for God. It makes me wonder, too, if this person might have been a Freemason, because Freemasons often refer to God as the Grand Architect. In any case, having a G in the keystone symbolizes that their strength comes from God. Let's talk about the symbolism of chain links. Often, when you see a headstone that has three links of a chain on it, it means that the deceased was a member of the Odd Fellows. That was a popular fraternal group. The F, L, and T stands for Friendship, Love, and Truth, and that's another clue when you see a chain like that. However, the chains that I saw at Deep Creek Cemetery are a bit different. I saw a couple headstones, in fact, that had a similar motif. I'm going to show them to you now. Okay, so the hand pointing down stands for sudden death. That hand is essentially the fickle finger of fate. It's God or one of his helpers calling someone to heaven unexpectedly. The hand is plucking a chain from a link. This symbolizes a loss in the family. The chain has been broken. And I don't see this that often here in North Texas. So once again, this little cemetery offers some hidden gems. Generally speaking, birds represent the soul's flight to heaven. In particular, doves are considered heavenly messengers. Doves are also associated with innocence, which is why they are often featured on children's graves especially in older cemeteries like this one. As I mentioned before, life wasn't easy for the people of Deep Creek. In the 1800s, the infant mortality rate was much higher than it is today. Back then, you really didn't know if your child was going to make it to five years old. Once they made it to five, they had a lot better chance of surviving. But those early years were really risky. So, unfortunately, it's very common in these burial grounds to come across some really heartbreaking graves for young children. I mention this because generally when I explore an old cemetery, I don't feel sad. You know, everyone from 120 years ago was going to be dead, right? But it, you know, it just feels like history then. But children's graves, they really do tug at my heart. And we have quite an example here. We have this little dove, which is dead. I mean, just look how, I mean, it's just very pathetic, that poor little dove. And then we have a tree of life. So that little stump there that's been cut, that is symbolic of the child's life. Their, their life has been cut short. And then those two branches coming out, that is the mother and father. So the family tree for this little one has ended right there. And wow, that's just really powerful sim symbolism. And every time I, I don't come across this particular example very often, but when I do it, it always really, uh, it really tugs at my heart, like I said. 
Here's another symbol that I don't see very often. It's an acorn. Acorns are the seeds for oak trees. Oak trees are slow growing, but they can live a very long time. So from a tiny little acorn, a mighty oak tree can grow. In the Bible, there are lots of stories about the power of faith, especially how a little bit of faith can cause miracles. So in a nutshell, if you'll pardon the pun, an acorn represents how great things can be achieved through faith. By the way, did you know that I send actual physical postcards to my Patreon supporters? Here's one from March where I visited the grave of some sponge divers. They were Greek immigrants, very interesting. And then in April, I sent some April flowers. So check it out. People often disagree about the exact symbolic meaning of a sphere or a circle or whatever you want to call it here. Often spheres are added to monuments and they're just considered decoration and they're not really considered to be symbolic. But when I see one on top of an obelisk, such as the one you see here, I tend to think of it as symbolizing the cosmos and the eternal aspects of the soul. Hands are another big topic. And if you're just getting into cemetery symbols, learning what hands mean is a really fun way to start because hands are so easily recognizable and yet they can mean so many different things. In fact, the meaning of hands is how I got my husband interested in cemetery symbols. Not that he had much of a choice. He was married to me, right? But anyway, I did mention earlier in this talk that a hand pointing down indicates sudden death. Well, here's a hand pointing upward. This is kind of like saying one to beam up. It symbolizes the soul ascending to heaven. Handshakes are another common motif. They can mean different things, but a lot of times they represent marriage. The examples I have here both indicate a married couple. And one big clue is because you can really see a gender difference in the hands. And as you face the headstone, the man is nearly always on the right. I should say too that in the past, menswear could be a lot more frilly. So sometimes it's harder to tell and you kind of have to look at how muscly one hand is or the other. It really varies, but it's just all part of the fun. If you're interested in learning about the meaning of cemetery symbols, then I invite you to grab a copy of my free book. It's called The Many Meaning <laughs> the Many Meanings of Hands, a bit of a tongue twister, uh, The Many Meanings of Hands in Historic Cemeteries, and I'll put a link in the description to make it easy for you. I often joke that when it comes to cemetery symbols, all roads lead to Greece, because the origins for so many of the symbols used in cemeteries can actually be traced all the way back to ancient Greece. Alpha and Omega, for instance. Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters in the Greek alphabet, and so over time they've come to mean the beginning and the end. On headstones, you'll sometimes see the letters Alpha and Omega, but they're combined together to create a single design. This is a way to symbolize eternity and the omnipresence of God. On this headstone, we have an Art Nouveau style Alpha and Omega symbol and it's engraved onto a Greek urn. The ancient Greeks often cremated great warriors, but when used on a headstone, these urns are meant to remind us that just as our bodies come from dust, so shall they return to dust. Okay, let's talk about paranormal activity at Deep Creek Cemetery. Over the years, people have reported seeing a lady in pink roaming through this burial ground. And this makes a nice change from the more traditional lady in white, don't you think? But seriously, I've only come across a lady in pink or a lady in an orange colored outfit uh, a few times. Usually it is a lady in white. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments below. 
I also can't help but wonder if this mysterious figure is related to Miss Sally Bowman. I've also heard that there's a glowing headstone at Deep Creek Cemetery, but I have not found any photos of it anywhere. I haven't met anyone who's actually seen it, so I still find that claim a little dubious. The best photos, however, from a paranormal investigation at Deep Creek Cemetery that I have come across are ones that I've seen on the Facebook page for Heaven and Hell Paranormal. And I know that orbs can be controversial, but what do you think of the ones that these guys found? I think they look a lot more interesting than just dust particles. I have to admit, I have not been on an official paranormal investigation at Deep Creek Cemetery, but I'd really love to go on one sometime. I have, however, I've gone on a lot of paranormal investigations for other places that I've written about here in North Texas. And if you'd like to learn more about haunted places around here, then I invite you to read my book, Paranormal Texas. And while we're talking about books, you might also like my book, Understanding Cemetery Symbols, because it's all about understanding cemetery symbols and goes into a lot more detail about all the different symbols and their meanings. And lastly, I have a brand new book that came out today. It's called Six Feet Under Texas. And it tells the story behind a whole bunch of unique, famous, and historic graves here all throughout Texas. Like, there's a guy who had an iron tube leaning down to his coffin. He wanted people to put the keys to his coffin down this tube. There was a guy who had a phone line installed in his mausoleum. And I've even got information about the grave of a space alien that crashed and died here in Texas. So that book is just full of strange but true, really fun cemetery stories. Once again, I'd like to say thank you so much to Courtney and Karen, and I hope you're enjoying this online festival of the unexplained. I'm going to be attending all the other speakers too. And I want to thank you so much for joining me today on this tour of Deep Creek Cemetery. I sure hope you'll stick around by subscribing to my channel and exploring more cemeteries with me. Thanks again. Bye.